This is the wood and metal bandsaw. Before you begin, always familiarize yourself with the SOP and make sure that you know the operational safety checks and that you always have a push stick ready. The wood and metal bandsaws are operated the same, with the difference being in the blade type. In order to obtain a smooth cut, follow the three tooth rule, which states that a minimum of three teeth should always be engaged in the material. Any less will not only produce a rough cut, but can damage or even break the blade and cause harm. Always keep your hands two inches away from the blade at all times, and never keep any fingers in the line of the cut. Always use a push stick when any closer. Before you start the bandsaw, lower the blade guard so that it is no more than a quarter of an inch above the material that you are cutting. A large gap increases the risk of your fingers being sent through the blade and skewed cuts due to the flex. Start the bandsaw and guide the material through the blade with a slow and steady pace. You should never have to force the materials through. For more accurately cut parts, direct the blade to the waste material side of your line and try to preserve the line as you cut rather than cutting on the line. A sander, a filer, and some good old elbow grease is what you need for a precise part. Or a CNC machine. When cutting curves, make relief cuts along all peaks and lows to reduce strain on the blade. Never turn the material unless you are also pushing forward as you make the cut. If your cut is drifting off the line, turn the saw off, back your material out after the blade has stopped moving and start the cut over. Don't try to overcompensate by twisting the blade. It is flexible and it can be broken or be pulled off its tracks. So far we've cut flat materials, but how would you cut cylindrical materials. Well, let's take a look. Yep, and that's why we don't cut cylindrical objects. At least, not without explicit permission from a shop monitor. Now these following examples are all incorrect and can lead to serious harm to you and the machine. No one's reaction time is quick enough to pull their hands away in time. So don't chance it. Now to cut it properly, clamp it down with the vise as shown. This prevents any rotational movement that would otherwise rotate your knuckles into the table or your fingers into the blade. Now the guard shouldn't have to be adjusted to allow room for the vise. If it interferes, then the piece is too small to cut and a different method should be used, such as a handsaw. As always, Clean up the machine and the surrounding area before you leave. Two compartments often overlooked can be found above and below the table. So let's do our best to keep others impressed. And keep the mess not a mess.